All right, welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel. David, how are you doing today? I'm good, Nathan. How are you? I am fantastic. And as the video viewers can see, we have a special guest lined up for this week's episode. I'm excited to see what you guys unveil for myself and for the listeners this week. Yeah, so... Um, I, I want to say something about copywriters before I introduce our very special guest. A lot of people will have a hit or two and call themselves A-list copywriters. No, they're not A-list copywriters. Our guest today is a true A-list copywriter. Doug Deanna has written for just about any major direct mail publisher you can think of. His clients include Agora, Boardroom, Forbes, Prevention Health Books, Personal Finance, and dozens of other big ticket clients. But, and I think you should be able to relate to this, like just about every other copywriter starting out, Doug was severely underpaid for his work at first. He turned that around on a project that earned him one quarter a million dollars in royalties about 30 years ago. He kept on going from there and he'll tell us about that today. What does it take to get the big bucks in copywriting. Doug has figured it out. He's also discovered how to get some pretty impressive public endorsements, like this one from legendary copywriter Gary Ben Savenga. Writers who can consistently create powerful direct marketing campaigns are as rare as trumpeter swans. I know of only about six in the entire country. Doug Deanna is on that short list of star writers I never hesitate to recommend. So today, Doug has agreed to share with you vitally important information about how you can get paid what you are worth, which as you can see by now, he has made a lot of effort to learn and learn, and he did learn it and profit from himself. I also have some vitally important information for you. Copy is powerful. You're responsible for how you use what you hear in this podcast. Most of the time, common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. So, Doug, thanks so much for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to share a few ideas that can help some other copywriters, uh, you know, walk down the path of of getting paid what you're actually worth. Now, that's awesome. Um, so could you start by telling us how this all happened for you and what was happening before and turn around and all that? Well, like a lot of people who start out as copywriters, you really don't know how much to get paid or, or, or what exactly that job is worth. And I'll never forget the first time I was out pitching um, um, a woman at the first savings deposit bank in San Francisco. Um, I had sent her some samples. She'd never returned my calls, never returned my calls, never returned my calls. Finally, she says, let's meet for lunch. And she says, hey, um, how much for you to write this two page um, sales letter? And I went, um, cause I didn't know what copywriters got paid, right? This was like 1985, 86. And because I was a salesman and I, I'd sold wood stoves, I, I was, I usually washed my hands before I go in. I looked at the bathroom, they had brass and they had marble. So I figured they had money, not knowing they were just a tenant in the building. So I went in and, and I said, uh, for, 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 for $40 an hour. And she said, how long will it take you? And I'm like, oh, my God. I had no idea. I go, uh, 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 about 10 hours. And she puts her hand on my shoulders and says, well, let's make it 50 an hour, 500 bucks. How does that sound? I'm like, it sounds great. Well, I walked out onto the sidewalk on Sansom Street in San Francisco, and it was one of those sunny, cloudy days. And all of a sudden, the, the clouds parted. The sun hit me in the face, and I dropped my arms to the ground, and I said, 500 bucks to write a two-page letter, I'm getting in the letter writing business. And that's when I found out 
They were paying their ad agency five grand for the same thing. And I raised my price to a thousand bucks. And I've always raised my price along the way. Um, another client that I had met was the, uh, it was uh, the Rough Times, Target Publishing in Pleasanton, uh -huh. California. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, I had given, was given the opportunity to write a promotion for Maurice Rosen's Rare Coin Confidential. And it did right. very well. And the, the uh, publisher wanted to hire me. They were going to pay me 200 bucks a day um, part-time to write copy. I drove over to Pleasanton. That was a lot of money at the time. Plus, I had four or five other accounts. And I would be working on an insert. If people know what an insert is, it's, your, it's a ride-along. It's your newsletter that goes out in the mail. And the insert goes inside the newsletter. And it's a sales piece. And they would pitch other investment newsletter publishers on the deal. And I would be the guy that write, wrote it. And then they would have these major projects, which I didn't get a shot at. And I go, why didn't I get a shot at it? Because I didn't have a track record. I go, oh, I got to get a track record. But he shared something with me. The contracts for these top writers who were getting 15 grand, 20 grand, 25 grand plus royalties that was very and kind of I, it. oh yeah and i was getting in that game so i had actually taken some time off from copywriting got back in the business and started doing what i do best smiling and dialing I'm a, i was never a copywriter just like a lot of you today you probably suffer from that uh, imposter syndrome well i was worried when are they going to find out i'm a salesman that types I'm not a copywriter. So I smiled and I dialed and the very first job I got was somebody 50, uh, for 1500 bucks. I picked I, the, the next guy, I charged $3,500. The next guy was $6,500. All in one year. The next guy was Phillips Publishing. They were 10 grand. But no Okay, I got to stop you. I got to stop you here. That took a lot of chutzpah. Um, chutzpah is a Jewish word, which means stones, balls, courage. Um, I'm sure you know the word, but maybe not everyone does. Not everyone has that. Or how did you get that? Or how did you decide? I mean, what was it in you that said, I can charge more? I got to charge more. I mean, what what was your thought process? Oh, back in the day, if you'll recall, there was who's mailing what? Do you remember who's mailing what? Sure, Denny Hatch. Denny Hatch? Yeah. Well, he had another publication called Who's Charging What? So I looked at what they were charging. Why shouldn't I be the same price? So Okay. And, and as I, you got the track record, you got more confidence and you realized you can ask for more. You can ask for more. Ask and you shall receive. How did you find their response would change as the number went up? It was easier. Because... You positioned yourself um, as a, um, a higher priced person. I will never forget the day that I was working with one publisher. I was getting $12,500 a direct mail package and a two and a half cent royalty. And that publisher marketing director was leaving. And I said, oh man, sorry to see you go. Really enjoyed working with you. And by the way, I see that you hired Jim Rutz, the world famous copywriter. And I said, you guys paying him his full fee? He goes, oh yeah, his full fee. And his full fee was $25,000 and a nickel royalty. And that royalty was for every direct mail piece that went out. And I said, okay, well, thank you very much. Well, the next day, the new marketing director came on board and I said, Hey, it's nice to meet you. I know we worked together before at another company. I just wanted to let you know, since we've worked um, um, together before, um, uh, my pricing structure has changed. And it's the same as Jim Rutz's, $25,000. You get a couple of tests and an echo royalty. And she said, okay. And I said, okay. <laughs> you know, but also at a, at a certain point, you have to deliver the goods. I was able to deliver the good, but a part of me, I have to give credit to all the great 
people that I worked at. I have been blessed to work with great, great marketing directors, great publishers, senior publishers, gurus, that I was able to learn and get better at my craft as a result of the people that I worked with. And, uh, we had uh, Brian Kurtz on here about uh, four or five weeks ago. I, I noticed you not only worked with him, but he gave you a great testimonial on your website. Yes. Yeah. Um, I worked with Brian, Richard Stanton Jones, Chris Moret. Um, the, 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 the list is too long to name. But with I each you. one, you get like little information, like, you know, Richard Stanton Jones was working with Gary Benzavenga, Gene Schwartz, Clayton Makepeace, and Jim Rutz. And, you know, he said something to me one time and he goes, hey, don't think that their copy comes in right the first time either. And I went, oh, that's interesting to know. We're all human. Not everybody writes a winner. Some people write dogs. I have my own shame, hall of shame myself. So I would say, to people who are starting, how do you get paid what you're worth? Well, you gotta know what you're worth first and you have to know what that value is. And remember, we are salespeople. We are salesmen that type, we are commissionable people. And so when you look at what the people are making, well, you can either work over and over to get paid once, or you can do it the Doug Deanna way, work once and get paid over and over again. And there, in fact, there is no better feeling than getting a royalty check for six figures. And recently, I got about a $6,000 royalty check. Not a lot of money, but a lot of money for something I wrote 10 years ago that they've remailed. So ask and you shall be received. Have a great contract. I've got a great contract. I spent $10,000 great in my contract that ensured that I would get paid, how to get paid, who do you get paid? And do they, do you charge a penalty if, if you're not paid on time? And um, I had a, I'll tell you what happened when I really learned my value. I wrote a promotion one time that um, a publisher let somebody else knock it off. When I talk about knock it off, I'm talking about a derivative version. Hey, had the same pictures as mine, it had my copy and they like rewrote it paragraph by paragraph by paragraph. It had my order pages in the back and he wasn't paying me. Said it was totally different. And I went, whoa, I was in a fetal position because I had never been ripped off before. So what do I do now? Well, I talked to somebody. I learned some neutral language. I got him on the phone. I gave him three options. Option number one was to pay me a full royalty on every piece that the other person sent out, it wasn't gonna do that. And the other option was, I'll take action against the other person. And I could hear a, a, his tone change. And then I said, well, I no longer need to put all my eggs in your basket. And then I heard his tone change. And then he came back to me. It doesn't matter who it was, but he came back and decided that they'd pay me a, a penny royalty on 1.7 million pieces. It was 17 grand, 17 grand because I refused to work for somebody. I didn't know I had power. I didn't know it. That's when I realized I needed to copyright my work. Ah, I needed to have a contract. I needed to have a contract that, you know, that spilled everything out. And so, yeah, I worked with great, Great people, you always want to have a contract and it spells everything out. When you're starting out and people, you know, David, when all of a sudden you, you, people are, they're saying, well, they want you to rewrite that or rewrite this or change this. And, and then you're, you're scratching your head because you didn't build a royalty deal into it. I'll rewrite the thing forever just for the royalty. I didn't care how many versions you get, but it all needs to be spelled out. Not what you thought, not what you said, what what you think they said, but it's what you guys agreed to. And I, and I hope everybody who's listening into this um, can can get at least one good idea out of what I shared with you. One thing I'd like to point out is it seemed like at one point you moved from either call it 
being a contractor or um, artist to being a businessman, right? You know, I have to thank Tom Phillips and all the great people at Phillips Investment Resources back in the day, not the new irradiation, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, Iteration. They considered us, iteration, there we go, business marketing partners. I was a business marketing partner. You know, I was brought into meetings and um, to brainstorm ideas, um, to, you know, rewrite works, to update them. There was a certain point at time uh, with them that they called them Doug days where just about every ad that went out, I wrote because they could pick up the phone. Hey, market just dropped 500 points. Can you put a new lead on this ad? Boom, I'm yeah, on it and I could turn it around. I, I, I want to I talk to you about that because um, I noticed on your website that you developed an ability um, so when I had Brian Kurtz on or when I was talking to him about a new project I'm working on, he said, when will it be ready? And I said, well, it'll be at least twice as long as anything I say. And he said, I've heard that from every copywriter. But you, you're you the opposite. You seem to have developed a way to do things really fast. Is it because oh, yeah. of your naturally, naturally quick-witted nature or did you develop some techniques, shortcuts? How, how do you do it? Well, I, I created a formula, you know, I call it my million dollar copywriting formula. And when you think about it, every project you write has a beginning and a middle and the end. And we all know what the end is, put the money in the envelope, click and buy. Right. Right. And, and so, okay. And, and because I've sold for the most part, the secret stock that will make you rich. That's what I sell, the secret stock that's gonna make you rich. So it's just telling a stock story. And every stock story has something that's the same. It's intriguing. $6 Canadian oil stock to hit 12 by Friday, buy now. $20 backdoor Bitcoin trade. You know, the politically incorrect doubler. Because I was telling a stock story, a different stock story each week, it would, I, I, I learned how to write compartmentally beginning, middle, and transition to the body part and then transition to the close. It's it's simple for me, but also I think I've had a couple of secret advantages that other people have uh, have, have not had. And, and one of them was um, I was voted most talkative in high school. <laughs> the other, I, you know, you know I, I never would have guessed. And my degree is in speech communication. Uh -huh. And and each week in my business and professional speaking class, we had to give an impromptu speech and you never knew when you were gonna be called on. And as a result of that impromptu speech, if you didn't find a uh, follow the coach's formula, the teacher's formula, you got an F. I memorized the formula, integrated it in my mind, and for a while back in the day, you know how when we're working back in the day and there was no internet, and you didn't know who other copywriters were, you needed a place to go other than, you know, the grocery store. I joined a couple Toastmasters group and I, I would go to Toastmasters with my college in my mind formula, reach my hand into the bucket and pull out a subject. And, and I, would, I would usually win the blue ribbon. And the best, the, the best compliment I ever got was, and I want to thank Doug Deanna for not giving a speech today. So there's always a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay, beginning, middle, end. Headline, subheadline, introduction, transition. It follows a formula. At least it was easy for me. Well, okay. And I think a lot of people know that, but there's something, something else you did. And um, have you ever heard of a, a writer called uh, Ted Joya, uh, he's a music writer. No, and a fantastic uh, writer. And I'm, I'm reading a book now where he's talking about um, the early speakers from the Greek and Roman days, and the fact that most stories which we think were oh. written were actually spoken, and they seem to have been improv. But he said that what the great storytellers would do is the same thing the great bebop jazz musicians did and i'm wondering if it's kind of the same thing 
you're talking about, they found certain phrases, certain riffs, certain things would work, but they wouldn't always put them together exactly the same way. They, they, there would be enough variation and enough subtle nuance in the difference. So it looked fresh, but in fact, they were basing what they were doing on some proven templates, formulas, sequences, phrases. I'm not even sure what to call it because it's not well known. What do you think? You are 100% right on the money. 100% right on the money. In fact, giving that jazz riff might be something that I do. It's like my mind just jumps to where the copy needs to go. And I've learned that over time. And I learn it also um, uh, looking at other people's copy. It's like a journey. You know, it's a map. If you want to go to San Francisco to LA, you either pop on 101 or you're going to pop on five, right? But right. you're not going to take the back roads and you're not going to go three miles out of your way. And sometimes they'll read people's copy and it's like they you've taken them on a journey to nowhere. I'm like a straight line from the beginning down to the end. And that's it. Straight line, no, no detours, no exits. It's just the name of the game is in it. The name of the game is put the money in the envelope. Click and buy. That's the name of the game. So how do you get people? I I think you might have seen a couple of my uh, in my uh, you know self promotion for my coaching. I call it. Uh, I got a number of philosophies. I call it the cookie and the dog, which is real simple. If you've got a dog, it's sitting next to you. When I pull out a cookie, who's your daddy now? What do they want? People buy what they want. I'm your daddy now. So you and then in my copy, I would drop little cookies right? Money cookies, success cookies. And then, you know, the, the hopefully the, the reader would come and pick each one like of a dog, right? As they get to the, um, what's it called? Um, the paywall, which is plexiglass. And behind the paywall is like a, a dog dish full of cookies. And they, they can't get at it fast enough, right? And they don't get the cookies until they get out the credit card and buy. I've got another one. I call it the Jackson Five. A, B, C. It's easy. One, two, three, baby, you and me. People want easy. Nobody wants to work. You have to make things as easy as rubbing your two fingers together. That's how easy it is to get rich. I got my other philosophy, and these are all combined together. And I call the other one called uh, the Wizard of Oz. Because, 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 because I'm an old school reason why copywriter. People don't buy unless they believe and they don't buy unless you've explained why they should buy. And you cover all the objections. And my, our job is to walk the reader down the yellow brick road to get to see the wizard. And the wizard, you know where the wizard lives? Behind the paywall. <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> okay. now i don't mean to sound mercenary about this but the bottom line is everybody you're working for their mercenary and they've only hired you for one reason to make them money so so if you think about everything i've said i have been in the business of creating gurus i've taken stock pickers and turned them into investing legends well at a certain point well maybe i'm doing the same thing for me with my coaching program i mean i've spent 30 years doing that you know why should i believe you you know just take a look at my track record but so instead of a track record for stocks it's this track record for winners right it's the same thing sure i think if there's if there's one thing that I would advise everybody who's going to get started in this business and they really want to succeed is that the, the most important thing you can do is believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. If nobody buys if they don't believe and if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will believe in you too. And don't think that people are going to love your copy. They're not. They're not. It happens to everybody. 
right? Yeah. So they, if they get the results and they don't love the copy, smart ones will keep paying you more and the other ones you don't really need anyway, right? Oh, I have a great, I got a couple of great stories. One of them was, it was a supercomputer that beats the market 32 to one. And I, and I wrote the whole thing and, and I was blessed again, working with people who trusted me there, you know, there weren't these marketing meetings or they needed to, uh, it, it went from, you know, direct to video. I wrote it, they sent it. And uh, one marketing director got it. She goes, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this. Nah, 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 nah. Nah. Complained, complained. And I said, well, isn't that why we test? <laughs> Tested it. It was a winner. And another marketing person said, um, she was surprised um, that you didn't uh, rub it in her face. And I said, I didn't have to. <laughs> and there was another one where it was a, it was a great promotion. Uh, you go into these marketing meetings and I used to get upso- upset sometimes because I didn't have any ideas. I mean, let's face it, guys, girls, everybody, you don't have always have the ideas. You got to listen to your editor, your publisher, the guy who owns the business. He knows what he's talking about because he sold it forever. You're just new on the job. And so I'll never forget, I was in this marketing meeting and there weren't any good ideas except for one idea which is similar to something going on now, oil was at its all time low. And the editor was forecasting it was gonna go back back over a hundred again. And I'm like, yeah, right. And he started to make the case. And I said, okay. I started to do some research. I go, hmm, okay. Oil's at 25, it costs frackers $65 a barrel to pull the oil out of the ground, that means they're losing money. And when they lose money, they disassemble their equipment. And when they disassemble their equipment, they don't have rigs to drill. And when the price spikes, you just can't open the spigot. The law of supply and demand. And I kept going, whoa, whoa. And I kept turning the copy in and they'd say, well, I don't know about this idea. I don't know about this idea. And I go, well, if you, yeah, I'll stop if you want me to stop. If you don't want me to stop, I'll stop. Give me another idea. I kept going and going and going. It went out. It was a huge winner. It was a control for a couple of years. And the, and the publisher said, oh, yeah, I just want to apologize. You were right about that. But hey, you know, I w- it's not like they haven't said to me, hey, that sucked. Where did you get that idea? I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> not everything's going to work. And not everything has it has anything to do with you. Market timing, list, just do the best job you can. Be confident in your abilities. And remember, you get paid what you're worth. Believe it. I believe in you, just well, believe in yourself. Well, well, one one thing you're saying brings to mind the idea of a Super Bowl. You've been through this so many times, you don't take it too personally and you bounce back. I, I think that's good. Why don't you tell us about the spe- special offer that, um, you got on how to sell yourself as a copywriter because I know you made a special price for copywriters podcast subscribers, listeners, viewers. Well, years ago, this is this is a funny story. There's a a company that sells themselves as a copywriting training organization. Um, I don't want to mention their names, but they they have it's a four letter acronym. And one day, I got three letters from people wanting me to train them and pay them. Uh-huh. Hmm. That didn't make sense to me. So I started to write them a letter and that letter turned into a web page, um, which turned into a training program on how to sell yourself as a copywriter that I priced it so high, nobody would sign up. Except and all three of them, all three of the people signed up. <laughs> and I said, "Oh my God, I better come up with a program." And then it was, uh, was twenty five hundred dollars, and then I changed, and then I changed it to thirty five hundred dollars, and I'd get a, I wasn't promoting it because I was making money 
I was making money and royalties, not on an hourly basis, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just kind of took it down. And then when I started my million dollar copywriting formula coaching program, I rolled that course into it. So you get the course free if you do the coaching. I just don't coach you along on it. And it is pretty self-explanatory. And then somebody asked me if I would sell it online and I did. And so I've sold a bunch of them for $350. And I think I have given you guys a, a, like a $50 off for $2.99 if they would like to purchase one. $51. Link if, $51, $2.99. Here's the deal. It's, it's as if I'm coaching you. You get three clients in 90 days or your money back, except for one thing. You got to do everything I tell you to do. You see, so many times people, they buy these courses and they'll just, they'll click, they'll give you the money, they'll get your, they'll get your content and they'll go, oh, this looks too hard for me to do. And then they'll get, get a refund. I don't know. You, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get a, you gotta get a list of 400 names. I want to see what your spreadsheet looks like as if I'm Salesforce. That's what Salesforce would have you do. Where's your spreadsheet? How many contacts? Show me telephone log. Did you call anybody? You know, you call three people. It didn't work for me. Boo hoo. You'll never make it. You got to work. Smiling, dialing, picking up the phone, sending out emails. I just want to say that I thoroughly enjoyed this as I guess my question real quick before we're out of here is uh, number one, where can people go to get the course? And then a copywriter like me, one thing that you talked about in this is contracts and I've still, I'm still doing almost everything on handshakes and I'm doing okay. I make over five figures every month and I have steady clients that I enjoy working with and I haven't had to deal with any issues, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I really should think about setting up some kind of contract so that I don't get screwed over. So is that part of this training? Do you talk about that at all? Or if, if not, I'm interested in talking with you about that. So I'm sure other copywriters might be as well. Um, do you have any insights on that? I, and then of course, where can people get the course? Funny, funny you should bring that up. I sell, I sell a copy of my contract. <laughs> I can, I can, I can email me and I can send you the link. I get, and it's very interesting. What do I do in the morning now that I'm, you know, sort of retired as I, and I, I get on my computer and I go to gum road and I, have you heard of gum road? Oh, I love gum road. Yes. No. Yeah. No. No. Okay. So you go to go. Okay. I, I go to my swipe file and I go, bah, 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 bah. Oh, this is a good one. And I, 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 um, I, I upload it to Gumroad. I click a picture of it. I make a write-up and then I publish it and I send it out to my list of swipe files, contracts. Um, um, uh, some, I, I do my video breakdowns too. Mm -hmm. Like I've got about 12 of them out there that, that I'll take one of my um, uh, control pieces and then I'll, I'll put it on Zoom and then I'll do an audio overview of it and I'll just do a complete breakdown of it. I mean, I've got one of my one of my favorite ones is um, it was like the eleven hundred word. Email that brought in five hundred and thirty nine thousand dollars. And um, I did it for Forbes in 2000. And, uh, you know, I think I I offered I, I kind of treat them like NFTs. I think I was only selling 10 of them. And I think I sold like seven of them or so. You get a, a breakdown, how I wrote it, why I wrote it, why it's going to be a winner, why it won. As you can tell, I love this stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't, it's, I love it. I mean, how much more can I say? I love copyright. I was that we were copywriters before anybody knew what a copywriter was. You know, can you help me with my resume? No. I'm going to have you write my book. No. <laughs> okay. I type sales letters for a living and I get paid like an author. All right, Doug, thank you so much for coming on real quick before we're out of here. Hey, thanks so much. I want to let people know that we do have a link to this particular training that is in the show notes for this episode. You can get that at copywriterspodcast.com. And if you look up Doug, it's 
D O U G D A. Is that N N D apostrophe? If you go to dougdana.com, you'll get you'll get sent over to my million dollar copywriting formula site. And I got all sorts of swipe materials on there, um, articles that I've written. Um, I think what happens is that you come to a certain point in time, at least for me, is that I don't didn't need to have any controls, every controls. And I guess I'd like to kind of leave the, behind a legacy that, hey, I have a kind of a system that works and it's worked for other people. And I hope that it works for you. I've had a great life. I typed letters from home, got paid like an author, took my kids to and from school, coached their sports, went to jujitsu at lunch, got a black belt, went to the grocery store, cooked a meal, put a meal on the table. So my wife had food, you know, something to eat when she got home. And I repeated it. I didn't have to commute in a car. I didn't have to deal with awful coworkers. It's been great. I want the same thing for everybody. Nice. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your knowledge with our listeners. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you head over to copywriterspodcast.com and you can find the show notes for this episode in particular there as well. And until next time, we will catch you later. Catch you later. And thank you. All right. Hey, thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.